Hello and welcome to UiPath Studio X, the tool for building your own automations without prior programming experience required. Today, I'm going to show you how you can build your first task automation. Let's start by having a quick look around. The Tools tab here is the place to go to install extensions that enhance UiPath's automation capabilities for different applications and web pages. Make sure to install the extension for your browser of choice. The Excel add-on is very useful when you work with spreadsheets. It allows you to indicate ranges and cells directly in Excel. To install the extensions that you need, just click them. Now let's go back to the Start tab. From here, you can browse for existing projects stored on your machine and even open the most recent ones with a simple click. This is also the place from where you start a new automation, either as a blank task or using these templates that capture some of the most common scenarios you may encounter. In our case today, the blank project is enough. Let's click it, give it a name, and hit Create. Once it finishes creating, we see the Automation Design view. This is the Automation Canvas. Building automations is done by adding activities in the main panel. Think of activities as building blocks for your automation, replicating manual tasks that you would normally do on your computer, like clicking, typing, or creating a folder. We can add activities by dragging them into the designer or by clicking the plus button in the designer and searching for them. When you use the search function, you'll see common scenarios besides the regular activities. These are pre-built pieces of automation meant to help you save time. All right, today we're going to build a simple automation that takes a name from an Excel file and enters it into a website to get the corresponding unicorn name, like this. Then it takes the unicorn name and puts it in the same Excel file, right next to the real name. Since we'll be using Excel, there's a special type of building block that we need. It's called resource because it's not exactly an action. You'll recognize it by the fact that its name starts with use. Its purpose is to identify the file and application that we're using in an automation. All of the actions must be placed inside the resource. So we'll add a use Excel file and browse for the file. We can leave the name like this since it's the only Excel file used in this automation. And since we'll access a web page, let's also add a use application and indicate it. In our case, it's Chrome. And because the Chrome extension is installed, Studio X can read the URL and store it. This way, whenever the automation will be run, it will open this browser and this page. Next, let's enter the name into the text box on the web page. We'll use a type into activity, just like a human user would. We'll click Indicate Target and choose the text box. It's highlighting in green the text box in which the name goes, but it's also identified an anchor, the label that's associated with it. The use of anchors makes the identification process more reliable. All right, so now the question is how do we type the value from the Excel file into that text box? And we've indicated where we want to type. Now let's fill in the type this by clicking the plus icon here. It's going to offer several options, including Excel. This is what we need, so let's choose it, followed by indicate in Excel. We'll choose the cell that has the name and click confirm. And we can see the cell information here. So. Now we're typing the value from the cell into that website. We'll now need to do a click to submit it. Click is also the name of the action that we'll use. And we'll indicate the target, and that looks good. The final thing that we need to do after clicking the button is reading the value, the generated unicorn name, and saving it back into our Excel file. We'll do this with a get text action. It's going to ask us to indicate on the screen the value that we want to copy. 
The target is the right one, but the anchor is not reliable. As soon as the name will change, it will stop working. We'll click the delete icon here and use another anchor, your unicorn name. This won't change. We'll save the value to Excel and we'll indicate the cell next to the name and confirm. All right, now with that, let's run our automation and see if it does what we expect. Studio X minimizes the application and starts running. It types the name here, clicks the button, and a new unicorn name is generated. The automation is now finished. Let's confirm that everything works as expected. We'll go to Excel, and we can see the name has been written here. And that's how easy it is to automate a task with UiPath Studio X. If you're interested in learning more, you can go back on the home screen and then click the Help tab. There are links to many other resources, including product documentation with lots of step-by-step -step tutorials, and the UiPath Academy with free courses, including one on Studio X. Thanks for watching.